Moving back to the salicylic acid family of structures, once again we should contemplate what the NMRs of these structures would look like before we actually look at the spectra. For all of these structures, B, C, D, and E are common, whereas A and F change a bit. For salicylic acid, we might imagine that both A and F would be 1H broad singlets and show up around 10 or 11 parts per million. For aspirin, F specifically will be a singlet around 2.1, whereas A should be a broad singlet around 11. And for methyl salicylate, A should be a singlet worth 3 around 4 parts per million, whereas F should be a broad singlet down around 10 parts per million. Regardless though, for all of them, B, C, D, and E should be very similar. They should all be aromatic, bound to a benzene ring, around 7 parts per million. They should all be worth one hydrogen apiece. And at a first level of analysis, you would of course say that B should experience a coupling constant interaction with C and therefore be a doublet, and C should have interactions with both B and D and therefore be a triplet, and a triplet and a doublet. And this is generally speaking true, but as you learned with aspirin, there are more complicated things happening. B could not only have a neighboring interaction with C, but also have a longer range neighboring interaction with D. It could have a doublet of doublet type appearance. And what if C has two different J values with B and D? Then it won't be a triplet, but it'll be a doublet of doublets. And what if on top of that, you have the doublet of doublet pattern, but you also have a long range pattern with E, then it might be a doublet of doublet of doublets. So as you can see, when you have benzene rings and the possibility of long range interactions, then the splitting can become quite complex indeed. But now let's actually look at some spectra. So when you first open salicylic acid, something strange happens and you see this weird behavior here in the baseline. Not to fear, that just means that the baseline needs to be corrected. If you click on this button up here at the top, that should solve that. And now we can zoom in a little bit and see what this looks like. What do we have? We have a singlet down around 10. We have a doublet. We have a triplet. We have a doublet. We have a triplet. This spectrum was taken in chloroform D, which means that this singlet at around 7.26 can and should be ignored. This is the chloroform peak right here. The only peaks of interest due to the compound are this one and then these four in the aromatic region. Salicylic acid is not particularly soluble in chloroform D, so I also took a spectrum in acetonitrile D3, a different NMR solvent, and what you see on this peak is here is where the acetonitrile uh, peak shows up. What you have is a broad singlet, a different broad singlet there, and in the aromatic region, what we have is doublet, triplet, and something more complicated, which we're going to talk about later. Just to show you, though, the spectrum for aspirin in acetonitrile D3, to remind you, what we have is a singlet that integrates for three hydrogens at around two parts per million. And then in aspirin, the aromatic region is, generally speaking, a doublet, triplet, triplet, doublet pattern, as expected. If we move to chloroform D, what you now have is, again, that singlet worth three hydrogens near two parts per million, but a doublet, triplet, triplet, doublet pattern, and the chloroform D peak that you should ignore. Moving to methyl salicylate in chloroform, what you have is now the broad singlet around 11, the tall singlet at 4, as expected, and then in the aromatic region we have doublet, triplet, doublet, triplet, and a small chloroform D peak that, again, should be ignored. The easiest spectrum of all to analyze is the methyl salicylate spectrum, so let's focus on that momentarily. What we have is a singlet worth three hydrogens around four parts per million because of the methyl group attached to this ester. And we also have the broad singlet around 11, um, that is due to the exchangeable OH peak. And then B, C, D, and E are doublet, triplet, triplet, doublet, as you might expect. When we zoom in on methyl salicylate, what you see is, roughly speaking, a doublet, triplet, doublet, triplet pattern, 
If you zoom in even more closely, you see that there are the hints of some complex splitting starting to show up. But for the most part, if we go from here to here, what you see is roughly a 7.9 hertz coupling and possibly a smaller 1.2 hertz coupling hidden within that peak. And if you zoom in on a nearby peak, what we have here is, again, a possible 1.2, 1.3 hertz coupling and a larger, more obvious 8.1 hertz coupling. And if we zoom in on these peaks down here, what you see is essentially just a standard doublet pattern and a standard triplet pattern here. We can tell by looking at the coupling patterns here, doublet, doublet, triplet, triplet, that B and E should be the doublets and C and D are the triplets not necessarily in that order. Based on analogy to what we did with aspirin, we are confident in assigning this peak to be B, uh, and therefore this peak must be E. We are less confident as to what the identity of these two peaks are. And coupling allows us to figure that out. Zoom in on the distance here. What we see is that it has a 7.8 hertz coupling, which means that if we examine peak B and find that it has a 7.8 hertz coupling like we did with the crosshair tool, then by definition, if it is a doublet, the only peak that could also have a 7.8 hertz coupling is C. So B has a 7.8 hertz, hertz coupling and C must also contain a 7.8 hertz coupling. If we come over to the spectrum itself and zoom in nice and tight, what we see is that this peak here could be a 7.8 or a 7.9 hertz coupling, which means that it may in fact be peak C. However, it's not positive identification. If we zoom in tight on this peak down here at the end, what you also see if we go straight from the middle of that peak to the middle of that peak is a 7.6 hertz coupling which is to say all of these are in roughly similar uh, amounts of coupling values. And that is, of course, why you give rise to this nice doublet, triplet, doublet, triplet pattern. All of the coupling constants are very similar to each other. What that means is it becomes very difficult for us to actually specifically assign what B, C, D, and E are on the basis of the J value analysis. They're all basically the same. This isn't giving us any new information. By contrast, when we examined aspirin, we were able to nail down very precisely which peak was which, and when we look at the salicylic acid spectrum, we'll be able to nail things down as well.